right, third time's a charm. Welcome inside the SJHL Insider offices. My name is Clark Monroe from IKS Media, co-director of media for the SJHL. Uh, an exciting time of the year because we are down to the final four in the SJHL playoffs presented by UPL Canada. Uh, a, a wild finish to the first round of the SJHL playoffs uh, between Humboldt and Weyburn as they concluded their series in Game 7 in Humboldt, so we'll talk about that. Plus, later in the show, speaking of Humboldt, we'll be joined by the Humboldt Broncos head coach and general manager, Scott Barney, uh, to talk about, well, the series against Weyburn, but also the upcoming series against the Melfort Mustangs. Plus, Nugzi and I are going to be naming our players of the first round winners, uh, so stay tuned for that later in the show, and we're going to obviously preview both matchups as we head into the final four of the SJHL. But first, let's thank our sponsors, uh, of course, presented by UPL Canada, all of our playoffs uh, all of our broadcasts presented by UPL, uh, plus Borgo, Cantera Seeds, Capital Auto Mall, Chevrolet, Great Western, Nutrien, RBC, Saskatchewan Construction Safety Association, Sask Lotteries, Tourism Saskatchewan, Sask Energy, SGEU, and SGI. Of course, thanks to all of our sponsors. They keep the lights on. They keep us um, watered, and uh, we're good to go. So thank you to our sponsors. Let's bring in our, uh, our good friend, Jamie Nugabauer. Jamie uh, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I saw you got some delicious looking sushi yes. yesterday. Yes, thanks for I noticing. Love, I love sushi. Uh, Hashi Sushi here oh, in Regina. Yeah. Uh, it's one of my favorite places to order from. Uh, and nothing is bad, and uh, they usually have uh, really good quality stuff. So I was really pumped. Uh, you know what? It was one of those things where I've been watching uh, the show alone. Have you heard about this? Have you seen this? Have you heard no. about this? Uh, alone is when they send 10 people out into the wilderness and they have to survive on their own with oh. only 10 survival items. Mm. Uh, the longest person wins. Whoever's mm. there longest. Uh, people quit as they become, you know, hungry or whatever. And they eat so much fish on that show. Uh, not that it's sushi quality fish, but wow. they eat so much fish that I was like, you know what? I need some fish. Mm. So I there ordered sushi. That was, that was literally what it was there from. So. And you know who's not alone mm. is the good players on the four teams left in the playoffs because we have four deep, four yes. good teams. There's no Cinderella's no. at the ball, no. Clark. So no. there's a segue for you. Uh, all of the shoes <laughs> ha don't fit because there are no Cinderella's. No Cinderella's. Uh, no. I guess that's, I don't know. That's a weird segue, but we'll go with it. Uh, I like <laughs> it. Uh, no Cinderella's. All the shoes don't fit for some reason. Great. Um, you know what, Jamie? Uh, it has been a crazy first round, and we're going to recap the ending of it. Uh, it's about to be a crazy and exciting second round. So let's get into the hat trick. <laughs> Topic one, of course, we're going to look back at the conclusion of the first round. So let's get into game seven between Weybert and Humboldt. Let's throw up the score here. As you can see, the Humboldt Broncos with a 3 nothing win. There was no score through 40 minutes, and the Humboldt Broncos... Uh, the Humboldt faithful were on the edges of their seats at the Elgar Peterson Arena, but a third period power play explosion. Say that 10 times fast. Third period power play explosion with goals from Boris Kaufman and Spencer Bell followed up by an empty netter from Maddox Amaral. Sealed the deal for the Broncos and sent the Red Wings into off-season mode. The Broncos win 4-3 in that series in Game 7. Dazza Mitchell uh, was outstanding. He made 34 saves on 36 shots, but Ben Motu countered that with a 30-save shutout performance. Uh, so, Jamie, mm -hmm. let's just break it down. Game 7, that series was so good, back and forth between Weyburn and Humboldt. Uh, it did not disappoint. Didn't disappoint. Game 7 didn't disappoint. I think the Weyburn Red Wings need to keep their heads way high. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, not so much me, maybe our other co-host on SJHL Weekly, Roy McGoran thought it would be a quick series. He has a lot of faith in this humble Broncos, and fair enough. Why wouldn't you? But uh, Cody Mapes did a great job. Uh, you know, this is not your Weyburn Red Wings of two years ago. Uh, they are as experienced. They were as experienced as any team in the league, and they showed it. They had as elite of a goalie as any goalie in the league. I've been talking about Daza Mitchell all year. Uh, he was great. Uh, and they found a way, especially at, at home, and that's, you know, obviously the big thing about this series. The first thing that sticks out probably is the home ice advantage element to it. I said it when we were previewing Game 7, is that's why the Broncos, you know, worked so hard, did what they did, built their roster so that they would have home ice advantage in that series so that that game, Game 7 on Tuesday, would be at the Algar Peterson Arena. Now, Clark, if you want to dive right into Game 7 here. Yeah. Um, let's dive. Let's dive. 
The first Head first. 30, 35 minutes were all Weyburn. Yeah. Like Weyburn played their game plan to an absolute T. And Ben Motu, big save man, Ben, made three, four grade double triple A saves to keep the game 0-0. Zero, zero. And you think the the pressure maybe is on Humboldt, but also the momentum, the emphasis, the confidence at the Elgar Peterson Arena, Clark, would be in the hands of the Broncos. Mm-hmm. But uh, the, Bron- the Red Wings played a great hockey game, a yeah. great hockey game. And really, you know, we talk a lot about the discipline of this Weber Red Wings team. I know a lot of people tweeted out or even messaged me and were like, oh, the SG got the matchup they wanted and <laughs> made sure by, you know, making sure there was a five on three for Humboldt in the third period. They just made sure of it. Yeah. I'm like, those were, I don't know if you agree with me, Clark, those were really clear penalties. Yeah. Like, there was a tr- clear trip by Vizantini, and then Maharaj whacked Connor Tui in the face with his stick. Not on purpose, but he did. Uh, and Tui Happens. was bleeding. And what do you want? Like, that's yeah. the way it goes. So um, then Humboldt scores on, you know, both of those power plays, including the five on three by Boris Coffin, which was a bullet. And then Spencer Bell breaks the schneid just a little bit uh, a couple minutes later on a really nice setup. Um, by guess who, Cage Newens back in the lineup, and all of a sudden the Humboldt power play is working. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, really good hockey game, really tight hockey game, really opened up in the second, um, and the Broncos did what they had to do. How, how much, uh, you know, w- w- what did you take away from it? Well, yeah, that's exactly it. I think Weyburn um, was was one of the more balanced teams across the SJHL, yeah. I thought, throughout most of the season in terms mm-hmm. of, you know, it didn't matter – uh, the night, uh, mm-hmm. a different guy could step up yep. at any time. And you think of a guy like Cade Micklejohn, who came back from an injury late yeah. in the series just to get back into the lineup in yeah. Game 7. Uh, you think of Jerome Maharaj, who had such a great year and could be back next year as a early next year can- MVP candidate, if I might add. Um, he had such a great year this year. Uh, the 20-year-olds that they brought in all stepped up so much. Uh, you think of a guy uh, like... Uh, Matthew Hodson, who we're, who we're talking about at the end of Game 6, who got the game winner in Game 6, he was he is so clutch uh, mm. for that team. And you think of Max Manette. You know, they had such good players, and they have a lot of guys who are 0-4s. They have probably one of the best returning goaltender situations coming into next year, Weyburn. Uh, if you look at Daza Mitchell, eligible to come back. Yeah. Angelo Zoll, eligible to come back. And potentially Justin Merrick, depending on the yeah. situation there. Um, so, I mean, when I think of the series, I think, you know... Wayburn put in such a good fu- put up such a good fight, mm-hmm. and Cody Mapes two years in a row now uh, has not surprised this year, but last year they beat Battlefords in in Game One, obviously kind of putting them back on their heels. Uh, clearly waking up the sleeping giant, so to speak, in that series and the rest of the way because they didn't they did they they did they lose a game the rest of the way. Battleford's Battleford's did not, no. Right. So I mean, uh, huge kudos to Wayburn, huge kudos to Cody Mapes and everybody yeah. involved. Because uh, I think they put up such a good fight, and I I really look forward to seeing what they can do in the off season, coming back into next year. Like I said, when you have your goaltender situation as hypothetically set as they do mm-hmm. uh, coming into next year, there's got to be a ton of confidence, I would think. Yeah. For Weber. yeah, so uh, my understanding is that as uh, Mitchell is up in the air over whether he wants right. to go to school or not. He's and, eligible, though. And, but he's eligible, yep. and they really like Angelo Zoll. Mm-hmm. He had some great days. Uh, and then on top of that, you mentioned, you know, they did make that move to get Justin Merrick. They did deal away a piece. Remember, they dealt Elijah Anderson to yeah. Battlefords uh, for player. the rights to Justin Merrick, a useful yeah. player, no question about it. But it's a situation where if they didn't think, A, that there was a spot for Justin Merrick if he chose to come, mm-hmm. Uh, and B, that they didn't have some sort of re- maybe relationship or thought that Justin Merrick would come back. You know, obviously the Portland Winterhawks, year after year after year after year, they seem to find great goaltending, have a great team up in the Western League. So um, not that Justin Merrick isn't a great goalie, but it's, you know, he, he, he's got to find a way to make that team if he wants to. Uh, otherwise, it's not a bad bet at all for the Weyburn Red Wings. But you're, you're right. I mean, the options are certainly there. Um, you know, Cody Mapes loves to ha- stockpile assets. I know he's got guys coming back in trades that are still overdue, and yeah. he's got picks up the you know all over the place. So uh, Cody Mapes really knows how to push every button and pull every lever to make a roster. Definitely. And, and this year he was able to make a team a roster that was really in his image. So uh, you know, big time kudos, big big heart for that team. They got to find some D men. They're losing four of them. Yes. Four big now that's ones. obviously a big one. But yeah. Kovacs, Teasdale. You know, you yeah. look at Jeffries. Jeffries you know, and Doherty. Yeah. And Doherty. Those so, are all four really solid guys. Yeah. So 
there'll be some work to be done. Yep. But I guess on the other side of the docket, you look at Humboldt, and uh, we're going to talk to head coach and general manager Scott Barney shortly about some of this stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, you, one of your points was their secondary scoring really yep. stepped up. And you think of a guy like Spencer Bell, 47 goals in the regular season, two. And one of them didn't come to the third period of the last game. So, yeah. uh, you know, a guy like him wants to really take off next series. So that should be interesting. Uh, with Cage Newins in and out of the lineup, you know, with Landon Stromey in and out of the lineup, they, they got some guys who really stepped up. And I think Humboldt is going to mm-hmm. probably get some, have some really good takeaways from this series, I would think, with, with yeah. the roster going forward. Yeah, well, in the preview, I talked about... You know, the work that a big top pairing can have on the other team's top line. Every league has their sort of top line guys. uh, And often by this point in the playoffs, those guys are together on a line. And Bryson and Bell and Nguyen's, obviously they missed Cage Nguyen's for a couple games for a suspension during the series. And uh, that obviously took a big impact on the Humboldt power play especially. But Kovacs and Teasdale did a great job shutting them down. In our, you know, spoiler alert, our series preview, there's another great monster pairing on Melford <laughs> that I'm sure we'll be trying to shut down those guys too. Yeah. And I'm sure that'll, that'll be circled. But uh, Maddox Amaral took a big step forward. Boris Kaufman, um, this is a guy that's played some pro hockey in Europe already, Boris Kaufman. So the fact that he's come in and figured it out, you know, is not a huge, huge surprise. But, um, you know, he's, he was terrific. Uh, in the series, and and I know a guy obviously that you, that you know we're all high on, but is one of your favorites, uh, and the guy that you trusted, you know, even before the season started in our draft, I think Matt Van Blericom. Yes, uh, as an 06 first year, you trusted that he'd be. I picked uh, him a like huge second piece. or third round. Like yeah, really, really high, high. Yeah. and you know, I big time kudos. I mean, I knew he'd be good. I didn't didn't you, you don't know like a 17 year old in the SJ. You never know, right? Yeah. But uh, but he came in and he was money in the bank until you know, a potential injury situation from game six, but uh, boy, was he good. And you love to see that, you know, NHL draft prospect, Michigan Tech commit. Yeah. What what can they do when the chips are down, when the game is tough, when it's gritty and grimy? It's not, you know, fast-flowing first half of the season. Chances are a little bit easier to come by. Uh, well, he answered the bell, <laughs> you know, yeah. big time. So big time kudos to Matty Van Blericom, you know, big time kudos to his conditioning, to his mentality, uh, all those things, because obviously Bryson and Bella Nunes were circled, and Weyburn did a wonderful job, really, on them. Uh, but somebody else stepped up, and that's why the Humble Broncos are still going. Yeah, exactly, and we'll get into that in a second. So with topic number two, now let's look ahead yeah. to the next round. Our first matchup we're going to look at is the Flin Flon Bombers, the number one Flin Flon Bombers against the number four Battleford's North Stars. As you can see, Flin Flon had that 44-win season. Uh, Battleford's with a 36 win season. Their goals for goals against the goals for were pretty close. Battleford's actually outscored Flin Flon this year. Uh, goals against, obviously, Flin Flon had a, a bit of a crazy season with 60 fewer goals against than Battleford's <laughs> this season. It, unbelievable. Uh, Flin Flon, both of them are top four in, in special teams. Flin Flon first and first uh, in power play and penalty kill throughout the regular season. Battleford's third and fourth in penalty pill, pen, power play penalty kill. Um, but head-to-head is the big one here, Jamie. Three and one, Flin Flon uh, had a three and one record against Battlefords. One of those was an overtime game, uh, and you see they had some of the more productive uh, players uh, mm-hmm. on their top scorers. Of course, Kian Bell, MVP, second year in a row. But when you think of this series, last year's matchup, a uh, rematch of last year's final, I should say. Uh, what stands out to you? What what excites you about oh. this series? I mean, everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, get out and watch this. Get your flow hockey. This is going to be yeah. ridiculous. Some of the best. Okay, I'm not even going to say some of the best. The best, most entertaining game I saw this year was February the 17th at the Whitney Forum. Battleford's 8, Flint Flon 6. Yeah. Defense was optional. Goals were flying in. It was absolutely wild. Um, you know, look. Uh, these guys, the coaches know each other. They both have been in the league for a long time. Braden Clomosco for Battlefords and Mike Reagan for Flin Flon. You know, we talked in the series, the season, the, the finals preview last year, yeah. which was, of course, between these two teams. Uh, you know, how much respect those two coaches have for each other, how much they know each other's games. Obviously, they've been around for a while now. Um, and, you know, it, it's interesting. I mean, Mike Reagan is a good friend of mine and he was quite honest and 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 we were talking about the idea of revenge just a little bit 
for that final series because on two parts, and this is a big topic, and then we'll get into the minutia in a second. But, you know, on one hand, he tipped his cap fully to the job that the Stars did last year in the finals yeah. and, and to the job that Brady Clemosco did. Uh, on the other, I know it hurt him to lose in four, mm-hmm. and it hurt him to lose at the Whitney Forum. It hurt him to lose with, you know, the Jaden Merciers and the Cole Dupros of the world last year. Um, he, he basically said, that's never going to happen again. Like, we're never going to be dominated in a series like that ever again under my watch. And obviously with the roster that they have, uh, you know, it, it's hard to see them being dominated. Now, the question I have for you then, Clark, is I think we have to agree that Flynn Flon is somewhat of the top dog and Balford is something of the underdog. Yeah. But to what Weird degree? to say that, right? To what degree? Well, you know, um, I was talking with our good friend Jeremy Corrigan last oh, night. Oh, who is that? Uh, oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. That. Jeremy Corrigan. Uh, we were chatting just a little bit about the matchups. Yeah. Uh, and I brought up the point that Rory McGoran made um, a couple weeks ago on SJHL Weekly, actually, uh, where he said the bottom four teams in the playoff race were they were all playing each other kind of in the end of the season. And because of that, some of those teams had some winning streaks. Melville had some winning streaks at the end. Weyburn had a winning streak at the end. Uh, so like these teams, we all thought, you know what, maybe the difference between these teams isn't as big as we think it is. Uh, but I think what we saw in the first round was, and I mean, with the exception of Weyburn Humble going to seven, but what we saw in the first round was there is a big difference between the top yeah. four and the bottom four uh, in the playoffs. Uh, at least what we saw in the results, uh, two game, two four game series, one five game series, yep. obviously the seven game series, Weyburn uh, and Humboldt was fantastic. But um, I'm wondering uh, with, the battle for his North Stars, and we saw them obviously get off to a slow start, and then we saw the MVP season by Kean Bell when he came back, and they went on a tear. Uh, maybe the difference isn't that big is my long way of answering your question. Mm. Maybe the difference between these top four teams is so small, yeah. uh, and they're all so good, uh, that you know I think the biggest question mark for me, and it was answered in round one, the biggest question mark, and it's one of your burning questions on our website is, can 18-year-old Battleford's goaltender, Logan Cunningham, and I'm reading it word for word here, mm-hmm. continue his terrific play from round one? Because he was, all, you know, neck and neck with Harmon Laserhume for top, the top goalie in the first round. Yeah. Uh, but can he match Laserhume for Flynn Flon and, you know, shut down the powerhouse that is the Flynn Flon Bombers, the, mm-hmm. the, you know, offensive dynamo that yeah. is the Flynn Flon Bombers? Can he match that? But it's such an interesting series in that regard. It is. It is interesting. And, you know, to your point, like all Logan Cunningham could do uh, the last little while is face the teams that are in front of him. Yeah. And he did that. I mean, a three game uh, really hot end of the season as well against Kindersley um, there. And then, uh, you know, also a game against Humboldt, I believe it was. And then and then obviously he was wonderful against Melville and speaking to Marty Martinson a little bit. Uh, he talked about how that real that series with Melville was a sweep, but a bunch of those games could have gone either way. And sure. and Will Dyke was great too, but I mean the proof is in the pudding. I mean you can argue that the, about the eye test versus stats whenever you want, but the stats say one seven one goes against a nine forty save percentage mm-hmm. for Logan Cunningham. And what more can you ask, especially of an eighteen year old kid? Now he played in a not very good Edmonton Oil Kings Western Hockey League team. Before he came to Balfords, he played on a very good prep team in the CSSHL yeah. before. So he has been in playoff pressure situations before. Again, he's 18. You don't see that many 17 or 18-year-old goalies go far. I don't care if he played in the Western Hockey League. I don't care if he played in the National Hockey League. Uh, well, I guess I would if that was the case. But <laughs> <laughs> but still, if you're 18, it's still you're still a kid, right? Can we get so, an 18-year-old goalie in the NHL to come back to the well, SJ? Well, can we get? So we can could, I don't know if the last time we uh, we've seen an 18-year-old goalie yeah, in the NHL period. But uh, I mean, Harmon, Laser, Hume again, like can't overlook him. Uh, 075 goals against 975 pay, save percentage, and especially especially in those games. Uh, the, the the home games for Battlefords in this season series. Um, Harmon was absolutely sensational. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the difference, especially at Battlefords Arena. There was that neutral site game. Neutral, not neutral site, but different to rink than uh, at the ACC uh, and up in uh, in January. And, and Harmon was, was terrific. Uh, you know, both of those games, really. And, uh, you know, he played three of the four games, came in relief of Kenny Marquardt. 
in that wild one. But, uh, you know, he's just really good in that season series just in general. I know people like to talk about the weapons for Flin Flon, but, man, Harmon is such a game changer, um, you know, especially especially when the, when the lights are biggest and the lights are brightest. So, yeah, that should be a big matchup, and, and it's a big test for Logan Cunningham. There's no question about it. Yeah, and I look at, uh, and we'll wrap this up here kind of, but I look at uh, the Flin Flon Bombers stat leaders from the first round, and I look at Battleford's stat leaders. And you look at Battleford's, obviously, Kean Bell had 10 points in four games. Yeah. K- kid's good. He's a good player. Ben Portner, five points, half the amount. Uh, Bradley Blake with four, and then nobody else had more than three. And then mm-hmm. a lot of twos and a lot of ones. Uh, whereas you look at Flin Flon, uh, you know, seven, 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 seven. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, which <laughs> Connor Ryan had two in two games. Tyson Smith had two in two games. So yeah. they got a lot more. Now that obviously let's attribute that to an eight nothing win in game one, a four nothing win in game two. They scored some goals, whereas Battleford series was a little bit tighter with Melville yeah. because that's just the way Melville plays. Battle, B- Battleford's was facing Doug Johnson. Yes, exactly. <laughs> which, you know, happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Will Dyke, six foot six. Uh, yeah. He's a big guy. Yeah. But um, I just wonder. Uh, you know, will the spread out uh, depth of the Flin Flon Bombers be too much, I guess, at this point for Battlefords? Mm. Who, who on Battlefords, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not saying there isn't somebody that can, because we look at a guy uh, like, you know, Braden Sinclair. So he had two points. He had a goal and an assist in that series. Yeah. Uh, you look at Rylan Williams, who came back late in that series uh, to play a couple games, the youngster there. Jackson Allen only had one point. Uh, Jordan Grill only had one point. Uh, Evan Waldy had the one point. I know he's a depth guy, but still, he's a he's a twenty year old. Uh, so, like, which one of yeah. those guys? You know, Josh Metternak played all four games, didn't get yeah. a point. Yeah, yeah. So, which ones of those guys are we going to see have a big second round? Because I think, you know, Kim Bell's going to get his cookies. Yeah. Uh, you know, Ben Portner is going to be there with him. Get, yeah. He has the glass of milk. Kim Bell's got the cookies. Yeah. Uh, Tanner Gold's there. He's going to put up points. Um, but who else? I think, and and they have a lot of candidates. But I think who mm-hmm. else is going to help Battlefords keep up? With Flynn Flon. Uh, hey, that's a great question. And I'm sure Brain Clamosco right now is hoping that there's an answer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or, or the series will be done fast. Like, honestly, like, yeah. I'm not trying to chirp anybody, but Battlefords needs depth. Yeah. Because Flynn Flon will. And they have it. It's just a matter of. Well, do, well they do. Will, will they do. But this is different, a different world that they're about to step into. Yeah. They had a really, really deep roster, especially in the SJ last year. Yeah. Uh, and I think even even when they got to the Centennial Cup, like the Kessler rings and the Doles and the Southgates and the Bells, well, I think Bell had a rough Centennial. But other than those three guys were really, really good at the Centennial Cup. Then after that, there was a question about, you know, is there the same quality? You know, we'll see. Those guys are also yeah. a year older. Jackson Allen, Josh Metternach has been in a WHL final. Right. So, I mean, there's that plenty of grit and experience, too, on the Battlefords team, but... Do they have the depth to go deep with this Flynn Flon team? I'm not saying they don't. We'll just find out. Yeah, we'll find out who steps up. And yeah. let's have a look at the schedule now, if you can throw that up for us, Bryce, uh, for the matchup here. As you can see, it all kicks off tonight uh, in Flynn Flon uh, and tomorrow in Flynn Flon. And we'll shift back to Battlefords on Monday and Tuesday for games three and four. Uh, Friday will be game five, if necessary. Sunday, uh, the 14th, will be game six, if necessary. And then back to Flynn Flon for game seven, if necessary. Yeah. On Tuesday, so that'll be exciting. Yeah. And also keep in mind, just to remind you, I'm sure you know, but just to remind you, 7:30 Central Time means 6:30 in Saskatchewan. Right. So 6:30 puck drop in Saskatchewan tonight. Yes. If you're maybe in North Battleford, and I don't want you to get to watch the to turn on the game on full. And it's hockey, halfway done. And it's halfway done. Yeah. So. Yep, just keep an eye on that, um, and we'll make sure we probably put something on social media for yep. that as well later today. Yep. Let's move on to the second matchup as well, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more, so let's maybe not go too deep on this one because Scott sure. Barney is in the in the hopper, ready mm-hmm. to roll here. Yeah. Um, he has got his horse backed up into the corner, <laughs> ready with his rope, ready to For the two-horse race. Yeah. So um, we'll get into this, though, really quickly. we got the Melfort Mustangs, number two, uh, against the number three Humboldt Broncos. Uh, their matchup screen this year, as you can see, Humboldt shot the lights out. They scored 250 goals this year. I think that was was that second in the league uh, for goals for. Melfort was right there with tw- 218. They were about the same for goals against. Uh, about the same record overall, 38 wins for Melfort, 37 for Humboldt. Uh, pretty close in the, in the special teams department, especially the power play. They were right there beside each other. 
Um, the pow- penalty kill wasn't that different, wasn't that much different percentage wise, but Humboldt was eighth in the league, 79.1% compared to Melfort's 83.2. Obviously, you see Aiden Hutchinson had such an amazing season for Melfort, and Spencer Bell won all sorts of awards. He was nominated for all sorts of awards for his season in Humboldt. Uh, and the big, the big one here for me is that Humboldt edged Melfort with a 4-2 and two record this season. Uh, in the regular season. So uh, I guess the question that I led to you for the last series is how excited are you for this series too? <laughs> yeah, they're going to be different, two different series yeah. to me. I mean, they're both tight. They're all, these are the four Titans of the league, certainly. Yeah. Um, like the other two, ga- the, 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 the Flynn Flon Battleford series is the two fastest teams in the league. And there's no question in my mind. Yeah. These are the two ground and pound heaviest teams in the league. Yeah. Going at it. Probably Flynn Flon would argue that they're in that category too. But these, I think this is going to be kind of a grounded pound series and tight and tough and low scoring and James Venn versus Ben Motu, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, very, very excited. You mentioned Humboldt with that season series. Not only that, but they won the last three in a row, and not mm. only that, they dominated pretty strongly over the Melford Mustangs. So if Rory or anybody says that their Broncos are the underdogs in this series, I'm going to be like, come on, man. Yeah. Two points separate them. And the Broncos have played great against the Melford Mustangs this year. Rory put out the stat to us, so i got to give him credit. Uh, James Venn with an 832 save percentage against the Humboldt Broncos this year. The Melford Mustangs with a 60, what is it, 68% penalty kill in the first round against the Estevan Bruins. Yeah. So... Those are yeah. areas so what, that what was sure. it? Rory texted us this yesterday. Yeah. James Venn's regular season was against anyone else but Humboldt, yeah. a 919 save percentage, right. which would have put him second, I think, in the league. He was already pretty third high maybe, up there, yeah. but second, second or third, third in yeah. the league with save percentage. But against Humboldt, he was 832. So overall, he ended up being 912, which was still pretty dang yeah. good. But uh, you take away that Humboldt series, he, he gets up to almost 920. Yeah. Uh, that's a big difference yeah. uh, in a big sample size like in a regular season. For, for one team's match of six games to move seven points uh, on the, uh, the difference in terms of uh, the save percentage meter, it's a, it's a big difference. It's wild. Um, so that's, that's something to keep an eye on for sure. Uh, we saw Melfort's penalty kill struggle in round one. Estevan's power play was outstanding. Yeah. Uh, it literally kept them in the series, their Literally. power play. Uh, can it improve against Humboldt? We know Humboldt in the regular season was one of the, one of the more penalized teams in the league. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I know that's different, but um, their power play is very good. Yeah. Humboldt's, they got a lot of weapons on the power play. Uh, so we, can Melfort's penalty kill bounce mm-hmm. back after their series against Estevan? Yeah, I mean, Trevor Blevins... Uh, works Again, all these questions hard. are on SJHL.ca, the, by the way. Yeah, the, uh, I'm stealing these from Nugzi's <laughs> <laughs> article well, on SJHL.ca. So just uh, so you know, well, kudos thanks. to you. <laughs> uh, that's fine. You can take them anytime you want. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's specifically one game that the SVM Bruins, that you and I called together. Yes, that was amazing. That the Bruins scored four power play goals. So that's four of the eight in one game there in the first round. And I think the Mustangs were better after that. And I know Trevor Blevins and Ty Sugar will be you know, dissecting what went wrong oh, yeah. in some ways, and discipline's a piece of it. I mean, they had gave up five power plays per game, which is a lot in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, and as you said, kept the Estevan Bruins, who struggled to generate much of anything five-on-five five against this Melfort team. So, you know, I know they'll be working hard at it. You know, the challenge doesn't get any easier, especially with Cage Newens back in the lineup after his suspension. Yeah. Uh, again, the question of Matthew Van Blericom's health as well for Humboldt is one that I have. Sure. Uh, and we probably won't get any answers from Scott Barney or anybody about that. Well, he's that. listening. So. But, um, <laughs> you know, that's that's neither here nor there. I know yeah. both of these coaches are video junkies. They watch every hockey game they can get their hands on. Well, you on. know what? Funny you say that. Um, speaking of our trip to Estevan, uh, yeah. I was working out in the gym in the morning after game, what was that, three? Yeah. Uh, Ty Sugar comes in. And I was on the treadmill, and he got on the bike, kind of, you know, two machines over or whatever. And he was looking at film. Right. From the night before. So yeah. you talk about film hounds. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, no question. And, yeah. you know, like, I, I know that Trevor Blevins will be saying to himself, you know, we can also just play better in every area of the game. Uh, you know, Ryan Duguay, three goals. He could have had 100. Yeah. I know yeah. Chase Freemore had three bombs on the power play. So it kind of worked out and got some good depth con- contributions from Melford in the series. They're going to continue to look for that. And then the last thing I'll say about this series, and I'd love to get to Scott Barney and, and ask him, is I wonder, Clark, 
you know, the rest versus the rust question yes. has to be asked, right? Because I just not. typed that into uh, the oh, questions so that we can make sure that that right. gets brought up. So that's a good one. Yeah, because, of course, the Melfa Humble Broncos played two days ago, yeah. right? And in, not only in just a, two days yeah, ago, but in, in a, a grueling Game, game seven. 7 series. So. Yeah, and then the, and, and the you know, the Melfa Mustangs, not as grueling. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I mean, the, the got, Broncos got to use that momentum, got to see it as a positive. Uh, negatives are just uh, are just fluff and and can't don't help you so you got to get rid of them somehow but yeah you know there's got to be some wear and tear on those humble bodies yeah well we're going to get a whole lot more into that humble series in just a second so let's look at the schedule really quick before we get into our chat with uh, head coach and gm scott barney as, as you can see uh, we have the schedule here this schedule was a little bit back and forth nugsy we had a mm. couple versions of this schedule and um, I'm sure Scott might be smiling on the other side, or maybe he's not smiling, because <laughs> I think there was some, uh, I'm going to say some debate, some healthy debate about when these games should be. So just so you know, they are for sure Thursday and Friday, uh, as you can see, in Melfort, uh, starting tonight at 7.30. All these games are 7.30 Sask time, so let's just put that out there, because of the Flynn Flon thing last series, these ones are all 7.30 Sask time. Uh, then game three and four in Humboldt will be next Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, then Saturday back in Melfort for Game 5 if necessary. Sunday uh, for Game 6 if necessary, back to back there. And then Game 7 is TBD, to be determined uh, in Melfort. Uh, just we'll, we'll let you know uh, when we know. We will let you know. Um, and that's, of course, if necessary as well. Before we get to Scott, let's just get to our third topic, of course, which is our RBC Community Ambassador. Mm -hmm. Nugsy, do you want to take this one away? Do you yeah, have any information, sure. any updates on this one? Uh, yeah, I mean, last, last we looked, Joey Lee's had a small lead on Jacob Kazette. Yeah. That is still true. I know the Flynn Fun people have done a wonderful job marketing uh, Joey Lee's. Uh, we're going to really be, uh, how do I word this? We're going to be real clear on the fact that the winner will be legitimate votes. Curtis uh, Stepp does a lot of things behind the scenes yes. uh, for this league, and we can't thank him enough for all the hard work he does. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, polls and voting and the back end of the website are a big piece for him. So he's, he is, he's going to make very, very sure that the, the right person wins this without, um, you know, not that anybody did anything funny, but maybe some glitches or something have happened in the, in the, in the years past, we'll say. Um, so he's going to be very clear about uh, who wins this, but obviously four very worthy candidates. Absolutely. But my understanding is as legitimately as humanly possible, we can say Joey Lee's has a slight lead on Jacob Kazette. And there's still 10 days. Are in it, there's so. still 10 days. Yep. Uh, still lots of time to get your votes in. So please do that. Uh, and all four guys, like you said, yeah. awesome guys. And uh, they all are deserving in their own way. But you know who else is deserving and, and an awesome guy? Uh, the head coach and general manager of the Humble Broncos, Scott Barney. He's been waiting for a few minutes as uh, me and Nugsy have been rambling on. So, Scott, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Always good to listen to you guys banter back and forth and excited about the series here. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, you'll be traveling in just a, a couple hours. So uh, thank you for your time today. And obviously uh, a huge game as you guys kick it off. But let's look back at your Game 7 uh, battle with the Weyburn Red Wings. What are you guys taking away from your series overall uh, against Weyburn, and, and what can you apply going forward as you uh, head into Melfort tonight? Yeah, I think one biggest thing is, you know what, Weyburn's a, a veteran team. You know, you got the eight 20-year-olds, and you know, pretty much 95% 90, of the rest of the roster was, was, was 19-year-olds, and Melfort's kind of similar over there, a vet, veteran team, right, to play, to play seven hard games against a veteran team like Weyburn. And, and obviously a great goalie there in Mitchell, and it'll be similar in, in net there with, with Venn, who's arguably top three goaltender in, in the SJHL. And I think just being able to be battle ready was huge. And obviously, hey, there's a rest there, obviously not, but that's, that's hockey and, and, and your hockey players. And if you're not in shape by this time of the year, then I think you're probably playing, playing the wrong sport. Yeah, that's, that's one thing that we've talked about at length on this show. We talked about it on Monday on SJHL Weekly, of course, with Roy McGoran. Um, the rest versus rust thing. You've been an athlete yourself, obviously at a very high level. You've been in long series, I'm sure. You've been in short series, I'm sure. Is there a preference for athletes? Do you like kind of coming off of a, of a really hard series and jumping right into the next one? Or are those days off important? How do you view it as a coach now uh, in your career? Yeah, obviously rest is important, right? To have two or three days off is, is huge, right? But uh, you know what? We had an optional skate there yesterday after our long series and you know, in my head, I think we have six or eight guys on the ice and you got the whole team out there. So that's, uh, that's been the mentality of our young team all year. Uh, they, they train hard, work hard, 
uh, you know what, they don't like the option. They want to get on the ice and that shows that they, they want to get at this series here right away, which is a good sign for us. Yeah, absolutely. So as we dive in now to your series against Melfort, uh, you guys actually had their number this year. You got four and two against them this year. Does that number mean anything to you at this point? Does it add any confidence to you? Or are you guys completely starting from square one tonight? Uh, for us, I don't think we need to be be confident. We just got to believe in believe in our abilities. Uh, you know, we can take probably four of those six games, and I don't think they have their whole roster in it. I don't think they had that for for a big chunk of their season. They have their their whole roster in, right? So you know, they got the they got veteran decor there with four four twenty year olds that that you know, and obviously you got Ven in the back end, and and you know, you look at their 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 four lines of forwards. She's deep up there. So uh, you know, I like the way we match up. Uh, uh, it's it's going to be a going to be a tough series it's nice that it's it's only an hour and 15 minutes down the road and and you know i think good for good for both fan bases uh good for the game of hockey good for the sjhl and and you know it should be an exciting series yeah and thanks for your time barn boy those chairs behind like you're sitting on look super comfortable too love to get an invite to the Barney house one day to, to try them out but uh, there you go um, <laughs> I got I gotta ask you maybe maybe you sat in those chairs because I know you and I were texting a little bit uh, yesterday I think and you, you uh. I think we're watching some video uh, you know then about the Melfort uh, Estevan series uh, you know I know yours went seven and theirs only went five games but as we were kind of talking about like it wasn't uh, it wasn't a walkover at all for Melfort I guess what did you see on video from that series that, that you think, uh, you know, will be a big challenge for your team uh, coming up in this series? Yeah, like I kind of attributed earlier there that they got a veteran team and then, and, and you know, they got their roster together. They got their deep throughout their lineup. Uh, you know, at their, their penalty kill was, I think, second or, or third in the league. Uh, obviously, maybe it didn't hit where they wanted to their last series against against Estevan. But obviously, it was a, it was a lot of special team goals on each side of it. Uh, you know, they got a pretty, pretty dynamic unit on their power play there with, with Summers kind of playing the top end now. And you got Freak Moore, who obviously has a, a deadly shot there. And Hutchinson and Duguay's had, had, a, had a great series for them. Uh, you know, they got some, some, some uh, toughness there in the back end. And, and for us, you know what, I think our, our, when, when we're on our game, we got to be able to skate and we got to get involved in the game. And that's uh, kind of the way we, we've played. And, and in the playoffs here, you have to be disciplined in order to win. And I think that's going to be a, a big key on either side of the things. Yeah, for sure. And another big key, and I talked about it uh, in previewing the the series with Weyburn that you guys had, was that Nick Kovacs and Tyler Teasdale will get to know Spencer Bell and Travis Bryce and, uh, and Kate Newins quite a lot. And obviously Matthew Hodson, etc., did a wonderful job as well against your big guns as well as they could, for sure. Uh, it, again, the challenge is, is maybe ramped up even more, though, now with Chase Freemore and Leith Olison there on the back end for Malford. Everybody wants that kind of premium shutdown deep pairing. And, and Trevor, you know, you have to agree, has maybe the best, one of the best in the league for sure right there. Yeah, they got a great decor, right? They like to handle the puck a lot back there, uh, control the game, right? It starts from there and, and they get the pucks into their big gunners up front there. So uh, obviously, hey, you got to be physical on them. You got to take the body. Uh, you can't be swooping by them or they'll be by the other way. But, uh, you know, they got some smart players there. Uh, they have a great club. Trevor's put a great club together. Like I said, should be a should be a great series here, and uh, you know what? We're we're happy with any kind of matchup in in, in our lines. That's for sure. You know, Nugsy Nugsy talked about Teasdale and Kovacs for Weyburn shutting down Spencer Bell, Travis Bryce, and Cage Newins a little pretty good over the first round there. One guy who maybe benefited from that uh, was Matthew Van Blaricom, uh, who had a massive first round for you guys. Was it a matchup advantage uh, because of the defensive matchups that you guys saw in in the first round that allowed him a little bit more space out there, or was he simply that good? Uh, he was he, honestly he was simply that good, right? And, and we kind of had a chat before the playoffs, and and, and he, he's he's picked his game up, and uh, to see a guy at that age to be able to do that, uh, there's a reason why he's on the NHL draft list. Uh, he's he's a hell of a talent, but you know at the same time he'll put you right through the boards. And that's that's what's going to make a difference for him at at the next level. And obviously, he's playing with with Boris Kaufman, who who's already been one of our top forwards and a guy who who makes great passes. And he had three game winners in in, in our last series. And and Maddox Amro also works very hard and had had a great series there. So so for us, it, it's our depth through our lineup, and I think that's been important. Even though we got a young group, uh, you know, to face a little adversity was great for us as well, and it's gained a lot of experience for for our guys that. We can't get too high or get too too low, and you know, credit to Weber. They had, they had a great series in there, and, and a team that that 
definitely surprised a lot of people and, and, and credit to Cody and his group there. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, just to kind of continue on that same point, obviously, you know, Matty Van B did a nice job and his line there, Emeril and, and, uh, and Kaufman. And then obviously you throw in, you know, Jacob Stritzy had, had big moments and Landon Stromy had big moments and Merrick Mamich played his role. And kind of you go down the, the list, you know, how encouraged were you with, you know, those, the, this younger depth that you have, you put like a lot of your vets on that top line and, and fair enough. And they take a lot of, you know, the, 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 the talk, I guess, but uh, you know, how encouraged were you with the, with the determination of, of those younger guys, Connor Miller, I'll throw him in there too, obviously uh, to, to see them get this opportunity and, and run with it. it. It's it's great to see. Like, I don't think from game two to game seven, we had the same lineup. We had probably six to seven guys either in and out throughout and, and that shows that the next man up mentality and, and, you know, you see it in game seven with arguably the, one of the top players in the SJHL and then not being able to play. And, and, uh, you know, you get guys fill into different roles and that's something we've been able to do all year. And, and, you know, we have a great dressing room, uh, you know, what guys are, you know, never complaining if they're not playing, you know, we don't have a lot of extra guys sitting around. So I think that's important as well. If you look at a regular season, the, the amount of games played that some of those young guys have played, you don't see that in many rosters throughout our league. And, and uh, you know, it's a credit to those guys uh, buying in and, and being coachable. And it's, it's been great, great here this year so far. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, the last time uh, Melfort played Humboldt in a series, it was 2018. So uh, you weren't around yet. So you actually haven't faced Trevor Blevins in a playoff series uh, just yet. Uh, so just talk about, you know, Trevor and his teams. I know, you know, you talked about the, the roster, but just talk about what kind of the identity of Trevor Blevins teams and your relationship with Trevor that, you know, people can kind of expect in the series. Because I know you're two really competitive dudes. Yeah, obviously, hey, you want to be competitive, right? You be competitive when the, when the game's going on and shake their hands after, right? That's that's what good, good people do and, and hockey people do. And, uh, you know, Trevor has a hardworking team. Uh, they're going to they're gonna play hard in every puck. Uh, they're never going to never gonna quit. And, and uh, obviously, ta- Ty's learned a lot from him as well. And, and I think it's been great for him to get that experience on, under Trevor. And, uh, you know, I said, they've had great goalies the years I've been here. I, you know, Ven's been been incredible for them all year. Obviously, look at his numbers there. There's proof in the pudding there. And, you know, what? I expect a hard-fought series. And afterwards, you shake their hands. And whoever wins, all the best of them kind of going forward. And, and uh, you know, we're looking forward to it here. And as I said, it's going to be a, a great matchup for the SJHL and great for our communities. It's close. And, uh, you know, it's good for both organizations here. And who are you taking in a wrestling match then? Uh, Ty Sugar or your assistant, Carter Hansen, who are probably around similar ages, I guess. I guess Carter's maybe a little older, but... Two big guys. Yeah, I guess like Shirks played. Shirks was more of kind of like an agitator up front there, played pretty yeah. hard. And Carter was a, a shutdown shot block in D, right? So obviously, guys, stick with my guy and Carter <laughs> here. And then, uh, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe they'll be on the glasses hanging around on each other here this series. Who knows? So in this battle, uh, in this series, we have two of the more elite goaltenders in the SJHL that had two of the heaviest workloads and Benjamin Motu and James Van. Uh, in your mind, Scott, what, what makes each goalie so dangerous? If you want to start maybe with Benjamin Motu, uh, what makes him so dangerous uh, coming into this series? Uh, Motu is an ultra competitor. Uh, he came into us. I know we kind of told the story there a while ago. Was you know He came in as a, as a third goalie and, and wanted to prove himself. And I think that's something he's done you know, since he's a, in minor hockey to, to junior hockey and to get into getting his Division I scholarship. And he's going to compete in there. You're not going to get easy goals. And uh, you know what? You know, I, I know goalies don't wear a letter, but if there was one to hand out, uh, definitely uh, Benjamin Moto would have one for us in, in our dressing room. And all our guys believe in him. And, uh, you know, you go over to Van. He's been great in this league since he came in as a, as a youngster. Uh, played in a great tandem last year. Uh, probably learned a lot there as well. And, you know what? Trevor plays him uh, 80, 90% of the games. And, 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 and he's their guy, and, and Trevor has and their team have huge confidence in him, and I think that's huge. And, and it's great to see, you know, you look at the four teams in the playoffs, you got four great goalies, and, and uh, you, know, you can't win without a good goalie, and that's uh, obviously been proven year in and year out. Yeah, last one for me here, and I think Nugzi has one more for you. Uh, but, you know, we talk at length about um, how young the Humble Broncos are this year, one of the younger teams in the league. Uh, if not the youngest, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, nobody on your team scored more goals outside of Matthew Van Blericom last series than 
Ben Costantino, uh, and he's paired up with Oakley McIlwain, two 18-year-old defensemen. Uh, and, you know, in the games that I saw, they played a ton of minutes. You gave them a long leash. Uh, how good have those two guys been, and, and uh, what do they mean for you guys uh, to have two 18-year-old, uh, I'm going to say towering defensemen uh, out there for you guys a lot during the game? Yeah, we called them the Twin Towers back there, right? <laughs> we got McIlwain at the trade deadline, and uh, he's been great. Quiet kid that just wants to be wants to get better he plays the game hard and physical and uh you know what he was he was an offensive demon in in, in midget triple a last year won i think the alberta defenseman of the year uh he, he's been been great for us plays hard blocks shots uh, if you watch the third period in two nothing uh last game uh, i think he blocked five or six shots uh on on, on wayburn right and then you got constantino who's, who's got a bomb of a shot uh he's, he's came into his own playing inside the dots and, and you know, obviously he has the, the goals he has this series. He's, he's smart on the offensive side and, and the days play well together, the two big lads. And, and you know what, for guys that are 2005, it's such great experience for them. And, and we're happy to have them here in Humboldt. And we think it's a bright future ahead for both of them. Yeah, there's, there's no question about it. I mentioned on uh, Rory's broadcast in game six that uh, they're facing the Red Wings and they could probably eat a lot of chicken wings. Those two guys together <laughs> being so big. I was trying to make it sound funny, and I, you as usual, failed. Well, but I anyway, laughed. I giggled. Well, thanks, Clark. Yeah. I appreciate it. Last question for me then is, uh, you know, usually it seems like the last number of, number of playoffs you guys have tried to play the teams as far away as possible from you guys, Flynn Flon and LaRange over and over again. Uh, just talk about, you know, playing a team an hour away, how much that means to the community, how much that means to the area of Saskatchewan that you guys are. And, you know, I know that, you know, we can joke about money and whatever, but gates are important in this league, in this world. You know, for Rory and uh, the marketing people there with the Broncos, and I'm sure Hannah with Elfert the city thinking the same thing. Like, this is going to be a great, great series just for the communities. Yeah, without your communities, you don't have teams, right? They're SJHLs, all community-run teams. you got 12 of them. And, you know, every every area and team has a special niche that they need to do to get their fans in and, and sponsorships. And obviously, Melford and us are only an hour and 15 minutes away. And like I said, it's going to be huge for Melford, huge for Humboldt, right? Great for the SJHL. And in the end, when, when things like this happen and you have packed barns, it's uh, great, for, great for our players, right? More people get seen. Uh, our, our job is to move guys on to the next level. And obviously these guys are going to be watched closely here and into the semifinals. And like I said, it's, it's great atmosphere for both teams, right? You have in Melford, you're going to have the guys banging the drums behind the, behind our bench. That's awesome. I think it's, it's great. Right. So uh, humble. You have the, the sirens going and the fans into it. Uh, it's great. This is what hockey's all about. And, and uh, you know what? Can't wait to get going here tonight. Yeah, it all gets started tonight. And I know you have a bus trip ahead of you, Barnes, so we're going to let you go. But thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, best of luck and safe travels. I appreciate it, guys. Keep up your great work. All right. That was Humble Broncos general manager and head coach Scott Barney uh, joining us today for what is almost guaranteed to be a legendarily good series yeah. against the Melford Mustangs. I'm very excited for that. And uh, Nugzi, um, We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the matchups just as before we kind of wrap up the show here today. But one thing that we wanted to do here today was kind of put our spin on the players of the week. Because mm -hmm. uh, we don't have players of the week, I guess, during the playoffs. Uh, but we're going to do players of the first round. And we have all six categories uh, that we normally do during the regular season. MVP, forward, D-man, goalie, rookie, and Sask player. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's just have some fun with this kind of back and forth. Let's start with our MVP. Um, I'll start with you, Nugzi. What do you think uh, when when you think of MVP of the first round? Who stands out for you? Yeah, I mean, like uh, to me, like it, it was just kind of a no-brainer that he was the MVP in the regular season too. Key and Bell. Yeah, hard to argue against somebody else. Again, we talked about Mal Balfour's trying to find some depth scoring, but maybe you don't need it because Keaton's got his cape ironed. He's ready to go to yeah. be Superman for this Mel battle for his team. I had a five-point game against Doug Johnson's teams. I wonder if you go back in the history of Doug Johnson and the SJHL, how many guys had five points in a game against a Doug Johnson coach team? Probably not too many. So, Keen Bell. Uh, and I would argue that uh, Aiden Hutchinson deserves a lot mm. of credit. He had uh, the most goals in the first round, seven goals yeah. uh, in five games. And, man, was he so huge. Uh, there was a couple guys from Melford who had really nice series. Uh, Brett Ryan Dugay also, but mm -hmm. I think when you think of uh, MVP, I think Aiden Hutchinson stands out. So if there was a counter argument or like a second uh, option, to me, I think Aiden Hutchinson stands out. Uh, what about forward? Now this is 
Uh, obviously, some of the same names might pop up when we think of forwards, but I, I thought of some other names maybe too. But who who stands out for you as forward of the first round? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, lo- lots of good options, lots of good options. Um, you know, I think about uh, probably the guy that, even though he's young, even though he played six six games, makes the points per game even more impressive and stepping up. You know, Teasdale and Kovacs, we just talked about that. They played a lot, not just against Bryson, but against everybody. Like, yeah. they just played the yeah. whole night yeah. as they would. So Matt Van Vlerkom saw plenty of them and still put up six goals, five assists uh, against them. So uh, hopefully he comes back healthy again, and my pick is forward for is Matty Van Vlerkom. Yeah, a name that I thought kind of stood out, uh, and Scott Barney mentioned them, Boris Kaufman. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like he had such a good series, uh, and he was such an important uh, you know, secondary player for Humboldt in that series and really stood out. But, uh, you know, Ryan Dugay, you mm-hmm. know, you could say him. You could say Justin Lees, Carter Anderson yeah. from uh, Flynn Flon as well. Um, you know, Kean Bell and Aiden Hutchinson also apply for this one. So, like, those guys could also be included. Yeah. And for me, the, the th- I, like, I don't know why Alexi Silvestri only played three right. games, to, yeah. for, to be honest. But, like, the games that I watched, he was unbelievable. Well, you like, talk about was, points per game, too, He right? was unstoppable. Yeah, seven points in three games. Yeah. He was unstoppable unstoppable for Kindersley. Like yeah. He was unreal. And so. I think the whole uh, so rest, he's my number two. The rest versus rust debate comes into play here because, yeah. you know, maybe he had something going on. We don't know. So yeah. uh, that probably didn't hurt his chances no. of getting in all the games in this series. So yeah. uh, let's look at D-Man. Um, there's a couple options here, but I think maybe a couple stand out. Well, who, who do you think is the defenseman of the, of the first round? Uh, yeah. Um, I, got, I watched him a lot. Obviously, I called the series... Chase Freemore, like he was, he was money defensively. I said Esteban had a really hard time generating five on five. Yeah, and then you know he uh, he scored three of all three goals pretty much from the same spot on the ice with his absolute torpedo of a one timer. Uh, and you know, I, you know, Jason Tatarnik circled it. They talked about it. You know, everybody knows it's gonna come. Yeah. Yet he still unleashes a corker and it's a bomb. And what can you do? So I'm gonna go with Chase Freemore. Uh, there are other options, obviously, and like Noah Hull was up to his old tricks. You know, like a guy like Co- like Tyler Teasdale had a really good series. Yeah, too, Ben Costantino. Kovacs, but yeah. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Freemore. How yeah, I put I put Kovacs as an option, um, just because you know we talk about him a lot, and he was uh, such a strong player for Weber. And uh, you know, Ben Costantino comes to mind maybe a little bit. Uh, Nolan Roberts had a nice series for Melford, just yeah. numbers wise at least. He had a point per game. Um, so Anthony Back set a point per game. So there was a few guys out there, but yeah, I think Freetmore or Hool probably are the two guys you probably would argue for for that one. What about goaltender? There's, I think there's a few options here too. I don't think there's, I know there's two that are at the very top of the stats, but I think if you look down the stats too, there's a couple guys who stand out. So who stands out for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, the numbers are the numbers, and you know we we look at that Flynn Flon series and we say. It was a sweep, best team in Canada, et cetera, et cetera. And we all joke that I've been saying that Harmon Laser Hume is underrated. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to pick Harmon again. I got a 075 goals against 975 save percentages. And there was really long spells in uh, like pretty much all four of those games where the Kindersley Clippers were just pelting him with pucks. Yeah. And he just refused to let pucks in. He's going to have to be big again. He was really, really good. Probably saved some of his best performances for Battleford's. In the regular season, so yeah, I'm gonna take him. Yeah, two, go- three goals, I should say, in uh, yeah. four games. Two shutouts is what I was Not gonna bad. say there. Uh, Logan Cunningham had a great series for Battlefords, uh, and I go down a little bit in terms of, uh, in terms of the goals against, and you see a big guy like Benjamin Motu who had a huge game seven a shutout. Uh, he, you know, played all seven games a 9.38 save mm-hmm. percentage. Very impressive over that sample size of seven games to have a 9.38. So. Uh, you know, against a team you talked about pelting with pucks, Weyburn was no uh, not shy getting the shots on net uh, for sure throughout the series at when they could. Uh, Dazza Mitchell had a great series, of course, um, but lots of good goaltenders. Uh, but we'll go with I think but bet- somewhere between Laser Hume is probably your leading candidate just again because of how much he shut down uh, Kindersley, Cunningham, and Motu. I think somewhere in there you've got your goalie of the first round. Uh, rookie, and I don't think there's a whole lot of debate for this one, uh, personally. Um, for rookie of the uh, of the first round, I'm going with Ben Costantino. Mm-hmm. I think there's not there's a few other options, but I think he's got to be right there. Yeah, no, he's he was he was uh, he was huge. I mean, 
Melville didn't put up a lot of goals, but Luke Beadall was up to his old self. Mm-hmm. Like he was really good uh, when called upon. And but yeah, I mean Humboldt. Uh, I know they like to say how, a lot that they're a young team and they are statistically in the definitely in the bottom third. Uh, and they but they do have veterans in really key spots too. It's not like they're you know all young everywhere. But you know Travis Bryson is technically a rookie, so yeah, uh, we got to give him props for that too. Um, but yeah, I can't argue with Ben Costantino. Um, like honestly, uh, like if he's the guy in this league that goes the furthest in his hockey career at the end of the day, I'm not saying that's a lock, but uh, you know, in terms of like a high pro type of a level of a player, yeah. If one day you were like Ben Costantino in the American Hockey League, I would be like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, like he's well, he's that good. You know, so. body type and yeah. the skill level, the skill yeah. set that so. he has, uh, and he's still only 18. He's growing yeah. into that body type. Yeah. So you imagine how strong he's going to be when he's 19 and when he's 20 and then yeah. when he's 21 and turning pro or whatever he ends up doing, mm-hmm. going to NCAA or whatever. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a high ceiling I think yeah. for a Ben Costin. Yeah, role plus production for yeah. him. Exactly, yeah. uh, and he's been huge. Four goals, six literally. points in seven games. Yes, literally huge. Uh, Sask player, and again, there's a couple options, but I think one stands above the rest when we come to the Sask player of first round. Is it MVB? <laughs> yeah, hard, hard, to, hard to argue. I mean, I kind of love the all the little things that Clay Sleva does. Like he creates so much space. Yeah for Hutchinson and Dugay, and he could not care less <laughs> if he's the one who gets the credit for it. Uh, but, but MVB was was the best producer, um, you know, in there. Obviously, you know, I was – my eyes were opened. I know they were already open, but my eyes were op- opened even wider watching Keegan Little operate day yeah. in, day out. Um, so I just loved watching him in all three zones, power plays, face-offs, penalty kills. The difference for the Bruins when he was in, when he wasn't, when he was healthy, when he wasn't, like it's huge, was huge. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, it, you have to give it to Matt, Matt Van B again. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, shout out to Keegan Little, I think for Estevan, uh, obviously missing game one yeah. and then coming back and being so important and for, he the, was, for the uh, last four games. He was essentially dead. <laughs> yeah. Game five, like he was so sick. Yeah, sick. Uh, yeah, but he, the flu game, played played Keegan hard, Little's flu out. game. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was uh, joking with him and his dad about it before actually, but yeah. anyways. Uh, you know, you, you also got a guy. Yeah. Anyways, there was a there was some guys like you know Spencer Bell. Uh, I anticipated him to maybe be in this conversation before the series started. Mm. You know, he got shut down and uh, not shut down, and he still had five points in seven games. He he wasn't invisible out there by yeah. any stretch. But uh, you you got your teammate right. Matthew Van Blaircom stepping up, and there you go. Yeah, and I should say like. I did say that the Bruins did struggle uh, uh, at times to generate five on five against the Melford Mustangs, but power plays, you know, I think, uh, you know, in game four in Estevan, for example, late in the second period, the Estevan Bruins had a long four on three and James Venn was absolutely spectacular. Yeah. Made some ridiculous saves. Obviously he's a, a Saskatchewan kid. Right. Uh, so, so was he at his best maybe in the series overall? Maybe not, but he was clutch, clutch, clutch. Mm-hmm. So that's that's almost as big as you know overall numbers to me is the clutch gene, and James Venn showed that he had the clutch gene in that first series. Yeah, and sometimes we forget about goalies when we're talking about the Sask player yeah. of the week or or player of the first round, I should say, in this case. So yeah, James Venn is a candidate as and well. Daza, like Daza and Dazza, like Dazza was great. Yeah, for Waver and obviously a Regina kid. So you know both Venn and Dazza deserve to be in the conversation too. Yeah, for sure. Let's uh, let's just quickly think about uh, really quick before we end the show here the upcoming weekend of games. Uh, Bryce, if we can throw up the Flin Flon schedule one more time, uh, the Flin Flon battle for its schedule. Um, again, it kicks off tonight. This is 6.30 Saskatchewan time, so don't get it confused. 7.30 local time in Flin Flon, which is a different time zone, uh, so make sure you keep that in mind. 6.30 kickoff uh, tonight, and then Friday, of course, for game two. So tonight and tomorrow, uh, games one and two in that series. Let's flip over to the Humboldt Melfort series. Uh, to this one again. It kicks off tonight, Thursday, and tomorrow, Friday. Uh, 7.30 Saskatchewan time starts. So they are staggered in that regard. So if you want to watch a good chunk of the first game and then switch over or uh, go back and forth, it we have got you covered, folks. Yeah. The SJHL has you covered. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So you got all sorts of watching content tonight uh, in the SJHL if you have your Flow Hockey subscription, so make sure you do that. Uh, and if you don't have uh, the ability to get to the rinks, which I recommend you try to yeah. um, for all of these games, if you're anywhere up in northeastern Saskatchewan, anywhere, 
and you can get to Flin Flon uh, for the game tonight, please try to do so. Uh, and if you're anywhere near central Saskatchewan at all, uh, within, I told Rory this, a 200-kilometer uh, radius of <laughs> Melfort, anywhere in that radius, even 250 kilometers, let's be honest, uh, try to get to that game as well. Uh, make sure you call their office if you are to make sure the tickets are available because it may be close to selling out. So uh, do that. But, of course, if you can't do that, Flow Hockey subscription, uh, get yours today and, or follow us on all of our social media channels because we'll update you as much as possibly, as humanly possible, I should say, uh, throughout the night and into the uh, evening after the games with highlights, with recaps, with articles, with all sorts of stuff on shhl.ca, uh, our Facebook channel, uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. We got you covered as much as possible, so please do that. Uh, and of course, we want to just give a sh quick shout out to our sponsors once again. Uh, UPL Canada for sponsoring the SJHL playoffs, as well as these broadcasts. Borgo, Cantera Seeds, Capital Auto Mall, Chevrolet, Great Western, Nutrien, RBC, Saskatchewan Construction Safety Association, Sask Lotteries, Tourism Saskatchewan, Sask Energy, SGU, and SGI. Thank you to everybody there. Uh, it's going to be a fun, fun weekend. Nugzi, uh, last word to you in terms of the games. What are you, what are you looking forward to? I mean, uh, there's mm -hmm. so many things, but... Well... Uh Mike Reagan is looking for revenge, yes. like Drake would say, looking for revenge. All summer 16, except it's summer, yeah. not summer, and it's he, spring 24. Yeah. So he's <laughs> looking for revenge, and yeah. Rory is going to be looking for a bank big enough to hold all the money oh. that he will be making with the gates in the 50-50s in yeah, the yeah, Melford yeah. Humboldt series. And obviously the 50-50s in Flin Flon are legendary too, so... It's the perfect Final Four, really, I think, in a lot of ways. And let's be honest, the real battle is the battle of the broadcasters. We have Rob oh, Hart versus man. Marty Martinson. We have the youngster, Ben Tompkins, versus the experienced vet, Roy McGoran. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah, I mean, there's like no two louder broadcasters in the league, probably, than than uh, than Marty and, uh, and Rob, Rob Hart. So yeah. there, I think I think there's some sort of mentor-mentee relationship there, too. So that's yeah. kind of neat. I, uh, that one, yeah, if you're sitting anywhere near the press box uh, you're gonna in those games, something. you're going to hear the entire call. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Love it. <laughs> so anyways, make sure you get out to the rinks if you have any way possibly that you can. Uh, there's a ton of great hockey going on Thursday and Friday. Of course, no games on Saturday, uh, as the league observes the anniversary of the Humboldt Broncos bus crash. Uh, so there will be no games on Saturday. There's actually no games on Sunday either. Uh, and then we're back in action Monday and Tuesday across the league in different uh, and then staggers, I think, more or less uh, throughout the week. Uh, so anyways, what I'm trying to say is get to the rinks or get on Flow Hockey because uh, there's a ton of exciting action ahead. Uh, for uh, Jamie Neugebauer, for Bryce in the back, for everyone here at IKS and everyone at the SJHL, I'm Clark Monroe for uh, IKS Media, uh, and we will see you on Monday for the next episode of SJHL Weekly. Enjoy the weekend, everybody.